Hi, welcome to the Sharp Mind Sessions, where we interview successful scale-up leaders and try to learn from them how to create scale-up journeys ourselves. My name is Mia Rolf, I'm the CEO of Ideon Science Park, and we are now live at the Startup House, uh, one of the 17 house houses at uh, Ideon Science Park. And uh, I will introduce my guests in a little bit, uh, but I need to mention our partners. We couldn't do this without SEB Greenhouse. And I hope you have uh, watched the film that they uh, sent uh, to you through the reminder email. If you didn't see it, uh, we will send the link in the chat and you can save it for later. But this, what is the SEB Greenhouse? They actually have collected the skills, the, the trainings, the interviews and the partners that you need to create your scale up journey. So they would like to talk to you. If you are a scale up leader, you should uh, watch the film and get in contact with SEB Greenhouse. And uh, we, all, we have the mentorship uh, program, which is, uh, which is a part of this. The Sharp Minds that we have here, uh, we have four of them every year. They are not only Sharp Minds, uh, but they have given 10 hours to be mentors in the mentorship program uh, that we give out every year. And uh, uh, this year we have four uh, mentees and they are the, the winners of the m mentorship program are uh, Fidan Butiki from Animus Home, Julia Wikström from Snömål, uh, Mikael Victor from Bintel, and uh, Niklas Najafi Kristensen from Najel. And you will reach the contact information from uh, your mentor uh, after this session. So congratulations to you all. And it, Ideal Science Park has a long uh, history of, uh, of bringing world-changing innovations to the market. But we all know it's not the innovations that makes this journey. It's the people that actually brings the innovations to the, to the market. And we, we are here to support this journey from startup to scale up to big company and beyond. And uh, one of the things that we do is we try to learn from the best. And that's why I need to introduce my guests today. We have here Maria Rang, who is uh, Managing Director Sweden for ConSafe Logistics. Uh, you have uh, 16 years of experience from Ericsson and Sony at the Science Park, uh, where you had different management positions uh, within development and you had global responsibilities. And during your time at Sony, you led a team uh, through a growth period from 20 to 200 persons within a year. So we will hear about that. And since 2019, you were appointed uh, Managing Director of Sweden for Consafe Logistics. And you are now leading Consafe Logistics towards a market leadership and to be the most popular employer in the industry. That's also That's interesting. For you. Yeah. Uh, you believe in leading with a guiding star, a strong strategic leadership and an agile mindset. And we'll hear more about that too. And then I have you, Stefan Jepson, uh, managing uh, uh, or management consultant in the leadership uh, development and with a long history and, and much experience from uh, the IKEA scale up journey. You have 30 years of experience from that. You established IKEA in Canada, was store manager in France, managing director IKEA Belgium, and worked six years as a personal assistant to Ingvar Kamprad himself uh, at IKEA. So in growth leadership based on value and culture development uh, has been a cent the center of your interest and is now your full-time passion. Yeah. Hmm. Yes. And for those of you uh, who don't know this, IKEA and Ingvar Kamprad donated 100 million Swedish kroner, 10 million euros, to the start of Ideal Science Park. So we have a strong connection to uh, the IKEA uh, company. And a uh, uh, fun fact is that uh, the, it was uh, Ingvar Kampra that decided uh, that it was cheaper to have flat roofs. So that's why the Alpha and Beta building looks like they do. So with the, having said that, 
Um, Maria, uh, we have to start where we are today. Uh, the COVID-19 situation, mm. how has it affected the logistics industry in general, would you say? In general, I think um, a lot of things have happened and I think it's very sort of, if you look in different verticals, we have uh, customers working with uh, food or medical supply. All of a sudden their business have like a huge peak yeah. and also put a lot of uh, um, I mean demands on their warehouse and logistical flows of course uh, and for example in some warehouses you also want to for example have uh, more handheld devices because you don't want to share them with the colleagues right. also due to COVID-19 so there were some peaks in some industries uh, where others for natural reasons then have a, a down period uh, and some of those customers take the opportunity to sort of rethink and maybe invest in their logistical flow to be more prepared for what to come. So actually more work for you um, exactly. during these times. Exactly. So it's, we, have, we have a little bit of both. And then, there, of course, there are others that don't want to uh, or don't dare to invest. Yeah. Um, and then we also have, uh, I mean, looking at the big furniture company, which have a history of not being so strong in e-commerce and a lot of they want their customers going to the stores they, they had to, to sort change of, exactly yeah. they were already on that journey yeah but it also got even more intensified to yeah. get their customer distribution yeah going in a I good understand. way and Stefan you live actually in Belgium yeah and I, for, for the viewers, I have to reassure them that you drove here with your own car. You didn't step out in Denmark and, and no. you're now in your, at your summer house. No, so. and I had been completely isolated for yeah. two months. Yeah. Like everybody else in Belgium, we were allowed to go for a run in the morning close to the home. Mm -hmm. And then to go grocery shopping and go to the pharmacy. And that's it. Yeah. And how has it been sitting inside? Has, has... For me, normally my projects, they are outside Belgium, mm -hmm. but there has been no traveling. No. So uh, I yeah. have been busy with my book. Yeah. And, oh, uh, yes. Yeah. We have to show yeah. them the book then. So yeah. you're writing. This is a book about visionary leadership and Ingvar Kamprad and Ikea. But it came from the printer yesterday, so it takes another three months before it's in the bookshelves in Smoking Sweden. Smoking fresh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so the letter's telling, or breve berätta. Okay, yeah. but Belgium has, has um, the industry or the, the markets it, in, in the industry? Everything has been closed, yeah. also the IKEA stores. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And now since three weeks, uh, Belgium opens up uh, in phases one, two, three, and four. Mm -hmm. So it's a little bit more open today, but restaurants and cafes, they are not open. No, no. it will affect uh, for a long time, probably. It will so. affect for a very long time, I think. Um, mm. Okay, but we are now here to talk about your uh, respective uh, uh, scale-up journey. And, and uh, I know the viewers are really interested in, in, in that and learn from you. And if, can we start from at the beginning? How did it begin for you? Um, at the Sony uh, situation, were you given the responsibility, or did you take it, or and and how I'm, much did you? I mean, at that point in time, now we're talking uh, six years ago, when it that was the most sort of aggressive scale up I've, I've ever done. Mm. Uh, it, it was in a situation where uh, we had our organization working with accessories mm. and wearables, you know, headsets, uh, and then there was like one or two smartwatches. Yeah. But what happened at that point was that you wanted to do them more complex and more sophisticated. So you actually wanted to have uh, more software yeah. in those kind of products. Yes. So that was the responsibility I was given. So so, so uh, they asked you to employ 200 or, or how did that journey take I, I, I don't shape? think when I, uh, I, I, don't, I don't even remember if, if they said that that was the sort of target, but uh, I got this team like it was 20 developers maybe working uh, with one project at that point in time. And at the same time, we started more products with other products, mm -hmm. uh, working with different platforms, different softwares. And, and then we just said, okay, you need to build a software organization that can handle this. Mm. Uh, and and some, some parts, and you also then need to decide what should be in-house, what can be uh, sourced out. Mm. Um, and even if you are a development department now, because that's the, the big difference uh, in your journeys 
apart from the, the entrepreneurial journeys, is that you had a big uh, company around you. But even if you're a de- development department, mm. you had clients that you needed to make happy and, and uh, develop for inside the company. So they were ordering things from you and you needed to uh, uh, handle the, the organization to meet those expectations. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, that it was work? no, but it was more or less that it was on a. Oh, I think no one knew. It was sort of a new segment for for Sony at, mm. uh, at this at that point. Mm. Like, how smart would those watches or smartphones be? Mm. We had sensors. What can what should they help you with? What can they measure? So it was more okay. We need to be on that journey. And how should they be sold? Should they should they be sold like a product or mm. it's more the services connected to it? Mm. And then it's uh, both design, you know, hardware and then software. So everything needed to come together, but no one really know. Or should we maybe sell data instead? Yeah. So it was really sort of a... Sort of a startup, startup yeah. uh, journey uh, from the inside. It yeah. was. But we also then, uh, as we talked about before this uh, going online, that being in a big company, you have sort of the budget or you mm. have the funding from mm. the bigger company. Mm. Mm. Uh, but still need to sort of do the scale up. Still, it's a very that. unsecure uh, future. You don't know where you're going. So you yeah, need yeah, to it's... always make the decisions as you go, yeah. right? And uh, how, how, what skills do you think you had at that time that made it uh, work? I mean, uh, I think, uh, thinking back, I, will, I don't know if it's a skill set to be a bit naive, but it, it was more, I, 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 I hope so. <laughs> No, but uh, I, I sort of, um, I think I'm pretty, what you need to be is quite cool on not having a clear sort of assignment Yeah, that it can sort of evolve mm. over time. Mm. And then you take decisions along the way. Yeah. And you also need to have that to be, uh, to get energy from being in such an environment. And also the people around you also need to be happy about being in that environment mm. and not uh, sort of requiring requiring too much structure or too clear targets mm. because they will evolve mm. as we go mm. and that was actually the beginning where you try to form this structure yeah. because then when you are 200 you needed to then have that to have a structure because yes. otherwise it's like chaos yeah. so, so there's a point there we come back to that mm. And, and Stefan, if you start with your personal, not the IKEA start, but your per- personal uh, journey, where did that uh, begin? It began in 1983. Uh, I was approached by IKEA and I said, no, thank you. I was not interested in cheap carpets and folding chairs and all that. But I had some friends, they were already employed in IKEA. Mm-hmm. And they said that this is fun and it's also a possibility to travel the world. Mm. And I had a degree in business administration and French mm. and was curious to work internationally or so. Mm. So I said, okay, yes. Yeah. And then IKEA sent me to Gothenburg and I was supposed to be there for 12 months to understand what is an IKEA store, how does it work? But after six months, IKEA got a green light in Belgium, a green light meaning a permit to open four stores. Mm. So IKEA was trying to find young people like me and send them to Belgium. Open up as soon as you can. So we were maybe 20 young people there and a very good manager. Mm. Very good, maybe the best manager I have had during IKEA. He, he was able to organize us and to motivate us. Mm. And it was crazy also. It was a lot mm. of uh, partying, you know, so, but a very good manager. <laughs> And we employed... Maybe the parking <laughs> was important. Yeah, it was important. Yeah. But it became a little bit too much. And okay. the Belgian people, they were not used to that. So okay. it became some mm-hmm. kind of clash from ah. a cultural perspective. But we employed there 18, 1900 people during six months. Wow. To open four IKEA stores. So, so that was my, my start. Yeah. And then IKEA sent me to Canada. Yeah. And then I became responsible for the opening of IKEA Toronto, the first store in... Um, I mean, when you go there to a completely new country, mm-hmm. even if you know, know the language, uh, and the culture is a little bit like us, but 
what is mm. the first thing you need to set up to make this uh, success? You know, the, the Canadian IKEA organization, they had bought the site and they did know a little bit about the market. Mm. And IKEA has always had a high level of self-confidence. Mm. We know that the concept works well in other countries and there is no reason why it should not work well in, in Canada. So it's not a lot of research. It's a question of opening and recruiting and training people. Mm. And how you recruit and how, what type of person you're looking for? Uh, are we coming back to that? Or yeah, to we are, yeah. yeah, we care recruit on values. Yeah. Competence can be learned. So, so the experience or the, the training, the education is not important, but the attitude. The attitude and then the training in your care. Yeah. Mm. Okay. Mm. Always inside training. Yes. And, and, in, and uh, on your journey, how many stores did you open actually? And how yeah. many I participated in opening four in Belgium yeah. in the very beginning. Yeah. And then two in Canada. Yeah. And then I became store manager in the first store in France, yeah. in, uh, but that was open when I came. Mm -hmm. And then I became assistant to Ingvar Kampad and I went to Denmark and all that. And then back to Belgium in 2000. Yeah. And there the mission was to close the four stores I opened 16 years before. Oh. But mm -hmm. to replace them with six big new stores. Okay. So I don't know how many that is in total, no. but maybe and, 12, 15. And if you guess how many employees have you like In Belgium, recruited? we were 3,500 yeah. when I left yeah. uh, in the six stores. Mm. That's a big journey mm -hmm. and, uh, and, and lots to talk about. I, I will uh, come back to that too. Um, but and, and if we talk about international leadership here, because you were both uh, working in international companies, and uh, Maria, you were in a Japanese company, young, mm -hmm. uh, uh, Swedish, given responsibility. How much did you pick up or had to pick up of the Japanese leadership, and how much could you actually put in from yourself and, and maybe a Swedish leadership style? Somebody, I, I, uh, I did reflect a lot on that because I mean you have your own values and how you want to be perceived as a leader and then I also I found out it sometimes I got the feedback from Maria you're too directly or no, but it's, it's just a fact that the Swedish and Japanese leaders I mean in, in Japan it's more hierarchical and it's uh, yeah in, in the way you behave and you cannot sort of challenge people in meetings um, and, and uh, my leadership style is more sort of transparent and very direct so I also got the feedback you need you cannot be too direct Maria you're too direct <laughs> so I and it's all about like either you adapt a bit mm -hmm. uh, because what I wanted was to be able to sort of um, have an impact yes so then you, you need to learn some of the moves and, yeah. and, and especially sort of okay how much of the, of the dialogue or the decisions you need to sort of anchor before the meetings mm -hmm. Uh, to do all that. Is that a great tip from you to, to anchor things? Uh, <laughs> sometimes I'm a bit too impatient. So, I mean, if you really want to sort of do a good groundwork, you yeah. should definitely do that. Yeah. Uh, but I'm also, um, so, so it's more or less, it's all about like, do you want to do an impact or not? And yeah. then you need to adapt to whatever circumstances you have. Yeah, for you. every situation, I guess. It is. To learn what works. So, so even if you have a really strong my way or the highway, mm. but if that's not okay. successful in that situation, mm. then you need to sort of decide mm. do I want to be able to sort of. Yeah, and the, the internationally, I mean, all the markets that you've been uh, entering and working in, uh, what market was the most challenging for you? Lately, I have been working in the Arab uh, markets, mm. Morocco and Jordan, and mm. that is the most challenging. That is the most different from. Uh, in what way? From how, how? The, the culture, the hierarchy yeah. in society. Yeah. But uh, okay, okay, but it doesn't mean that it doesn't work. I no. mean, IKEA values and the leadership based on IKEA values. 
works, I would say, all over the globe, uh, mm -hmm. all over the globe. And in countries like the Latin countries, France and Belgium and Quebec, mm -hmm. or in Arab countries, there is a high level of hi hierarchy. Mm -hmm. I cannot pronounce that. No. Uh, Okay, yeah. And the more there is of that, the easier it is to create a nice atmosphere with uh, the values. And I, mm -hmm. I do believe that if there is something called Swedish management, mm -hmm. it is highly appreciated all over. Yeah. And what is mm -hmm. then Swedish management? Yeah, what that, is it? yeah, I don't really like to compare. I prefer to describe. And I think that Swedish management has to do with to be the one you are, to mm -hmm. be honest, mm -hmm. to be friendly to be fair, mm. to be demanding, mm. and to be a good example. Mm. And if you manage to do that, at least show an ambition that you want to do that, then... Uh, then it, you're welcome in most uh, yeah, yeah. markets. Yeah, and even more in Latin countries. Mm. Mm. Uh, uh, yes, that's about the international leadership. But when you are uh, facing the steps that you are facing when you're growing and you need to recruit more and more people. I know that both of you are, are um, passionate about the how, how to do that, how to bring them on and how to make them understand all the things that we need to accomplish. Mm. Uh, should, we, should we start with the IKEA value because they are so dominant here, <laughs> but, but is that, why is that a success factor, do you think? work with values and, and how did you as a person work with that? Yeah, the IKEA values together create the culture. That is the definition of the IKEA culture based on the values. Mm. And I would say that they create a nice atmosphere mm -hmm. and they create also a win-win situation. Most people like it mm. and if you like what you do you work better so it's win for the company also. But does it, does it uh, include, uh, I mean, does it uh, encourage you uh, as an employee to come with new ideas and make things better or, or do you just want to follow? No, you're, uh, you're, supposed, you're supposed to ask why and why not. Yeah. As a manager, you're supposed to encourage the people to do that. Yeah. Then everybody doesn't like the care values and then it's better to leave. Mm. Okay. But if you like it, then you don't leave. And I am a victim of the values. I stayed 30 years. <laughs> victim of the yeah, values. Victim You're product, of product of that. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, The view on the values before mm. IKEA became to become a big company, mm. and and uh, but but you were working with, you work with some something else I know. Uh, you are uh, passionate about the vision. Why, why is it the vision so so important when you have a growth uh, period? Yeah, because because you want uh, because. First, uh, it needs to be sort of compelling vision. Yes. I mean, you really want the people to sort of want to be on this journey with you because you need that extra energy. It's not just, okay, I go to work and I, we just keep it stable. Yeah. So I think it's also important to have lots of people in the organization that want to reach that vision because otherwise you don't get the sort of, it doesn't scale up otherwise if it's only one person that yeah. knows where we're going and sort of have the energy to get there. Yeah. Uh, so, and, how, so mm -hmm. how much time do you spend as a leader in your team? Uh, do you how do you build that organization with that vision, and how how much time do you spend talking about that vision? Uh, I spend more and more time on that. I think that's my learning as a manager, and then wanted to become more of a leader, and then also realize how often you need to say the same thing over and over again, and then then also say it with. The like in a simple way yes. that it actually sort of it, it gets stuck yeah and, and 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 someone I listened to someone who said okay to reach all the people and everybody in the organization you need to communicate like with 300 percent mm. and that's something I've really started to think about 
and, and as soon as you get a little bit stressed or sort of busy with your daily work you tend to forget about that mm. so but then mm. you need to get back communicate communicate where, on where we, we're going yes where we are going and what's your role in that right exactly because then you can leave more freedom yeah. <laughs> in the organization and to different roles as long as everybody's sort of walking <laughs> to this, towards the same goal yeah and helping out because that's yeah. what it was all, all about Absolutely. i think the values of ikea is also helping out in producing this success yeah. right mm -hmm. yeah and one very concrete thing i did when ikea value was growing i I, I try to live the values, not talk a lot about them, but to live the values uh, mm. in myself. Uh, but what I did when Ikea Belly was growing, I realized that my availability for the many people around me was not good enough. Mm. I, am, I am well organized. I plan my days. Uh, Stefan, you have 10 minutes for me. No, maybe next Tuesday. And that is not good enough. So I decided at one point to plan only half the day. Ah. So the other four or five hours, they were not planned. They were avail availability hours. So that, that made me answer you, yes, I have 10 minutes. Maybe not now, but 3 o'clock. Mm. Because to say to her that next Tuesday, 10 o'clock, then she would have forgotten the question. So that was a very good thing to do to create the availability. And the day was full after four or five hours. Then came uh, Outlook Agenda. So other people could book mm. my agenda. Yeah. And that was a disaster for me. <laughs> <laughs> but the solution was to book a lot of meetings with myself. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So I need to learn this. <laughs> I know that some of you think so. Mm. Oh, okay, that's a good concrete uh, tip actually to, yeah. to book yeah. availability time. Yeah, because when IKEA Belling was growing, the number of people reporting to me was not growing except for the new stores, the store managers, mm. they were reporting to me. Mm. But I had to realize that there was a lot of other people than the people reporting to me yeah. who wanted 10 yeah. minutes or 15 minutes yeah. or my view on things. Yeah. And I started by saying that I tried to live the values and also in all these small informal meetings. Mm. It was my way of uh, spreading the uh, atmosphere I preferred. Also, and that's also how you could implement and, yeah. and live your values. Mm -hmm. And, and influence, influence a lot of other people by yeah. my avail availability. Do you also have some, some uh, reflection on this, uh, how to plan your, your uh, leadership uh, <laughs> uh, or your implementation of the, the vision that you have? And now, no, first, I think uh, what Stefan says is really, really important. Yeah. Like That's also how you get the feeling of that the organization is quite flat. Mm -hmm. I mean, even if you have a structure of managers, mm -hmm. the message is also need to go through each and every person. No. I mean, to have those direct conversations, sort of also be able to, to, to ask questions. And that's how you also keep them, that, um, to secure that everybody understands the vision in the way you yeah. sort of, yeah. the assignment of the company. And that's very, very important. Sort of like an ear to the, to the ground. Yeah, but it is. All the time, yes. And you can get the feeling if there's some uh, problem, yeah. they will come to you and it's more easy to fix it exactly. if you know it. And then another thing is, uh, I, I talk, I mean, I say it to everyone, but then I fail doing it, but all like to reflect that you actually have time. You can book time with uh, in the calendar, but you also should keep it to yourself. Mm. I, you can have someone mm. to talk to, of course, but it's all like reflection of, okay, have we gone, have we taken the steps I, I plan to do, take this quarter? Mm. What's the feeling in the organization? Whatever I'm thinking of has that sort of, landed in the organization do people understand what we want to do mm. uh, or what do we need to do it different because always like okay try something out learn reflect mm. on it and then either you just keep on going or you sort of change the course and another thing i learned it was about the control mm. uh, in the beginning i had a 
tendency to control much more. Okay. You know, I know best, so I have to check uh, everything. But to realize that uh, if now this woman is uh, responsible for an IKEA store, it is a big job. It's 500 people and maybe 110 million euros in turnover. Then I need to trust her. Mm -hmm. So the advice is let go the control. Yeah. Let go the control. And also to realize that my own idea is better implemented than the idea my manager gives me. Mm. And to apply that on myself, <laughs> if now we are going to <laughs> remodel, <laughs> yeah, yeah. to remodel yeah. a showroom, a showroom yeah. I know how to do it. Yeah. And I can tell you how to do it, and you will do it. Yeah. But it is so much better if you implement your idea. Mm. You are going to do it, you are going to run it. Mm. And I can always correct a little bit later. Mm. Mm. That was a learning for me. Let mm. go the control and respect for other people's ideas. Because all in all, are you able to scale up mm. if you don't let go? Probably not. Mm. Probably no. not. No. And that, mm. I think that's one of the toughest mm. decisions that you have if you're leading a startup that mm. we are five or 10 people and then suddenly, okay, we need to grow really fast and I, everybody cannot come to me. I need mm. to find my team. And how, how important is the team and how did you create the, the, the team around you that, that, uh, that could do this mm. with you? you have, yeah, yeah, I think that the key word here is trust. And I normally say that there are two different schools when it comes to trust. One school says that we need to work together for three months before I know if I can trust you. Mm. And another school says that we are going to work together, so I trust you. Mm. Yeah. And I would say that the second school is more Swedish mm. than the first school. And mm. for me, it is a key to yeah. trust. Then people can abuse my trust, but that's something else. Yeah. I trust in the first place. Yeah. And, and people would say internationally, perhaps, that this is a bit naive. I think that's a, yeah. a, I think that's a strength. Mm. I, I, I choose mm. to be believe in you. Mm. I choose to trust mm. you. And mm. let's see what you can do with that. Mm. It's like a chance also for someone else to grow. No? Yep, yeah, uh, absolutely. To be naive is also Swedish. <laughs> yeah. I have always been accused for being naive. I believe in this. Yeah. And I have been told that that is very naive to do. This is a way not to pay high salaries. You get that instead. Ah. But then my answer is, but in that case, I prefer to be naive because I like it and I see the uh, atmosphere yeah. and the effect and the results. Yeah. And I think that I have also proven several times that the unit where IKEA values work performs much better than another unit. Mm -hmm. And that gives credibility to my naivete. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. But I mean, to follow it up on, on this with the team, I mean, it's it's super important. I mean, we, we never scale if you don't, if, if it's only you. Mm. And it will not be sustainable either. Even yeah. if you have like loads of energy, yeah. it, it will never last for so long. So I think it's also like recruitment process or whatever, who you choose is to have around you. Mm. I mean, trust is one thing. And then uh, you really need to be able to challenge each other. It should not. I'm a really strong believer it should not be a lot of minimis. I mean, no. they should be different or have different perspectives. Uh, so it's more but to, to have to the be, trust and openness in that team. Yeah, but and, uh, but to have the trust, I mean, um, uh, uh, you have to also understand your own uh, disabilities or what what yeah. your what you need to complement yourself with. So you need to have like insight about your own strengths, failures hmm. and strengths. Hmm. And so, and you had something about that. I, I no, guess. but I think when it comes to insight, I think that is one to me, I just realized when you said this also, like when recruiting a manager or, or direct report, I think if they don't have any insights, I've had a really, really hard, I mean, that they, they sort of, they think about themselves, they want, how they are perceived hmm. and how they want to develop. Hmm. Because they don't, if they don't have that, they don't know how to complement sort of where they have right. their weaknesses, where they need a strength to take help from someone else. And I think if you don't work with insight, I have a hard time to see how you can develop. Yeah. And then, and then you have a hard time trusting mm. if people think they're good at everything. Uh, mm. Right? That was one of the strengths for Ingmar Kampa. Mm. 
the consciousness about his own failings mm. and also the ability to complement that mm. with employing people without that mm. failings mm. Uh, was one of the great strengths uh, of Ingmar Kampan and I tried to describe that mm. in, in my book. Mm. Also. I'm looking forward to read it. Yeah. One, <laughs> one of the things uh, that we usually uh, talk about also is, is when is it the when is it time to step down from the leadership to what one i mean uh, talking about this uh, weakness or wh when is your time over as a leader do you have any thoughts about that because in in the entrepreneurial journey there is one or other time where you can't be all, a super good startup leader and then a super good scale up leader and then when you're big and into multinational you're the you're some that's completely something mm -hmm. else but so how what's your view on this do you have a, no, but, uh, a it's a, it, well, i'm just sort of what I, it's different phases yeah. of a company and it uh, requires different skill sets mm. and no one have have it all no and i think uh, you learn from being in different situations sort of what are your strengths when do i get the energy and not and then it's all about being so prestigeless yeah. and also being uh, willing to change the organization and also change your role yeah. for what is needed to maximize that each and every phase. Yeah. And if you don't do that, I think sort of then you drain the company yes. down mm. the wrong road. Yeah. And then there's a skill to see it in others too. That mm. Your time is now until we reach this point and then be strong enough to say, okay, now we need to... I think do something else. Absolutely. And be, be, uh, in, on, when I've done these sort of more aggressive scale ups, it's also been a lot of re organization, reorganization, yeah. but not like in a heavy way, but also like, okay, now it's now we need to do something. Yeah. And then do that quite quickly and not so dramatically. No. Just to be able to sort of match the needs at that point. Mm -hmm. Do you look at this? Is interesting for me. I'm not. Not sure if it fits here, but do you look at the team uh, uh, skills or the functions first to maximize the effect? What's your uh, skills? You know, I understand what I'm asking. No. Maybe. So if you have like, who who do I have? I have these persons. They have these skills, and now we need to uh, reorganize this way to create the best success or to make them grow as much as possible or do you start with okay we have these needs of functions and mm -hmm. who fits in each function which way do you do you lead no but i think i've done both actually and it is it's just it both pros and cons it, it depends on what you want to sort of optimize the organization on but in those uh, in the beginning in the scale up, we have been very focused on that project or on that product. Yeah. I mean, all the sort of energy and drive has been on getting that out on the market in yeah. the best possible way, which I think is very powerful. Yes. Uh, and, and it's a very energetic uh, it's a environment. Team game, it's a like, team, yeah. exactly. And, it's, and, and, the, and the target and the goal mm. is so easy to see. Mm. But then when you scale up like next level, yeah. maybe work with multiple projects products and so forth mm -hmm. then you and, and need to prioritize between yeah. that then it's a, a different ball game and then yeah. perhaps you need to um, go for more functions um, and it's also to have sort of a feeling on okay what kind of competence in terms of technology or whatever do we need at the next step right and that's also when you as a leader need to step up and not be deep down in every project mm -hmm. right and it's a it's a hurtful uh, step if you are not uh, if you love that face when you're in in that team game right absolutely but then who then someone else <laughs> I mean yes, someone yeah. needs to sort of okay what's around the corner right what do we do next yeah uh, and that's also difficult to see uh, is it me should mm -hmm. I move up or mm -hmm. should I actually stay here mm -hmm. am I best here so that's something that mm -hmm. insight uh, ab about your own skills and leadership and your dreams yeah. perhaps I was more thinking about Dima Kampad again here, mm -hmm. his, mm -hmm. uh, his uh, consciousness about his own failings. So now IKEA was quite a big company when he stepped down from the managing director mm -hmm. chair. Mm -hmm. It was in 1986 and then IKEA was around 4 billion Swedish. Yeah. 
and maybe yeah. yeah but today <laughs> but today it's 420 billion <laughs> Swedish mm, yeah so let's say Ikea had 50 stores or something but in any case he realized that his strength is not to run a big company like this mm. his strength is more to be on the floor to mm. be in the store to mm. be in the factory mm. and also to create motivation and enthusiasm mm. and then of course in the board but you realized there that now I need a managing director, somebody mm. who could work with many people mm. better than I can. Mm. And he also loved the fact to, to be on the floor and, and like be the culture bearer or what you say. Yeah, without that, this wouldn't work. No. He, he was the one to respect the values. And then there was also a manipulative side of it mm. that uh, he did know that when he was interviewed in TV, uh, he could say in the middle of the interview that, you know, it was far away to the hotel, so I took the bus. Can you maybe pay the bus tickets? So, and he <laughs> didn't know that 8,000 people, they were looking at, at him. <laughs> And uh, yeah, but that was his was way. Was it an image or yeah. was it him? Both? I don't know. <laughs> I don't ah, know. Exactly. But in you any really case, in any case his yeah. point was to exaggerate mm. a little bit the uh, cost mm. consciousness, for mm. example. But Ingmar Kampar, he was not a greedy person. Mm. Smart and cost consciousness, but not greedy, mm. very generous person. Mm. Mm. Yeah, it's it's. Uh, I mean, how was it to work so close <laughs> with him? Did you have any quarrels with him? Yeah. Give us some gossip. Yeah, <laughs> not not many, but uh, I was the one to initiate an environmental policy. Ah. Yeah, that was in 1991, mm -hmm. and I said that if IKEA has a vision to create a better everyday life for mm -hmm. the many people, there is a need for an environmental po policy, and he. He, I think that he understood my point, but he was a little bit fed up with me. So I said, but then you write the proposition to me. Yeah. Okay, fine. And yeah. I did. And that was the first, uh, first uh, but policy. Th I think that actually shows a great leadership to give back that. Okay, tell yeah, me yeah, how. Yeah, tell yeah, me how. Yeah. Mm. And then listen. I think so my time with, with him was never boring. No. no, it was exciting and inspiring and it was long days and long weeks and a lot of traveling. Mm. And I think I learned a lot from him, um, mm. not, not only to sell home furnishing stuff, but a lot about uh, human relations, mm. Mm. which is leadership mm. or management. Mm. Exactly. Uh, yeah. So my book is not a neutral book. I liked Ingmar Kampar mm. and you will see that mm. in the book. Uh, Yes, uh, very interesting. And uh, Maria, if you if we talk about, um, I think we need to start to wrap up a little bit and, and uh, open up for questions because I, I hope you have some. Uh, uh, if you if you look at the whole journey now and and uh, where you are now, mm -hmm. what you are trying to uh, accomplish to become the most uh, loved employer in the industry mm. how how do you plan to do that now, based but, on your experience yeah, yeah i think um i mean we have a quite clear uh, view on how to do this i mean we we have set out a, a vision sort of a compelling vision okay. like a, <laughs> like uh, not like two three years but also like more mm. far-fetched 10 years just to have something also to dream about because sometimes yes. when you talk about what's happening in two three years mm. you get quite stuck in where you are today yeah but then we also say that okay this to reach that uh, we also need to have sort of basics in place mm. and then we always re evaluate or evaluate are we are we ready to take the next step mm. have we come far enough mm. with what's on the base and then we also make uh, in in concept we talk a lot about um, and me as a, as a leader, like about this behavior. So mm -hmm. the culture is one thing, but then, but then the business and the financial status of the organization or, or the company is another thing. And then the strategy. So we think mm -hmm. you cannot sort of get successful by just having one of those in place. No, no, of course. So, so you step, uh, you balance the steps. 
with the uh, all the time, but also vision. being very. Yeah. I, I talk a lot about like grit or endurance. Yeah. You sort of, you, 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 now you, more than you, ever. Perhaps. Yeah. Yes. Exactly. Mm, yeah. And, and you put out that vision, and then you sort of okay, am I? Yeah, we are sort of starting to move, mm -hmm. and the more people that move mm -hmm. within the company towards that vision, the mm -hmm. more power it gets. Yeah. And and you need to be sort of. And how do you reward the people that really do? Do the job and have the grit and and are with you all the way. How do you see them and work with them to keep their I mean, spirit going? I, I I am a strong believer, as, as Stefan said. Like you also want to be uh, sort of um, be there mm -hmm. <laughs> and also be available mm -hmm. and and and. Uh, and also sometimes you actually, I mean, I talk a lot about feedback and how we, I'm always like continuous improvement, how can you get better? Yeah. But I mean, you mm. should also say, okay, this was good work. I mean, yeah. we, we fought, fight hard for this and yeah. we put in, in a lot of energy. So do some, I've done some um, digital high fives. I yeah. found on, uh, in, uh, <laughs> you can use that in Zoom. And I don't think it's just a lot, like mm -hmm. all yeah. the way, sometimes it gets a bit too serious and then you need to put that yeah. joy into it uh, as well. Because you need to have fun. Both of you have talk, talked about the, the, the importance of having fun doing yeah. it. Like, uh, yeah. We have never had any problem to recruit people no. in Belgium. No. Uh, there is a rumor in the market that it is fun to work mm. for IKEA. Mm. So, uh, yeah. Even when you like uh, decrease the, the parking a little bit or yeah <laughs> yeah but it's still on a reason I've never <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Maybe that's also a little bit Swedish we need mm. to mm. have fun uh, uh, during uh, the work and and also after yeah, but a team even after the work. yeah but not mm. being less demanding no uh, not that's not the same. No, no exactly so challenge mm. each other you mm. want to have sort of you set the high target but then about having fun is also to get that extra energy. Yeah. Mm. yeah. So, so all the energy you get, then you put that on the right stuff. And, yeah. Uh, Great. And if we wrap it up <laughs> with, uh, and I've asked you to think about this, do you have like th the three most important tips or learnings that you would give to all the scale up leaders sitting here and, and about to start their scale up journey or in, in the middle of it? What would you like to say to them? I go back to trust. I think that is a key word for me, mm. to trust people. And also to create the reliability that people around me, they should know that they can trust me. Mm. That is my task, to create that reliability. Mm. Another thing is to compensate your own failings, uh, yeah. as I said. To realize your own failings, to recognize mm. that you are less good in this and this and this, and to compensate that. Mm -hmm. And maybe if there is a number three, it is to take risks. Yeah. To take yeah. risks. And here I am primarily thinking of recruitment. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. To dare to promote and recruit on potential, not only experience. I love that. If you see my story, I became store manager in France when I was 29. Mm -hmm. Then 400 Super, yeah. people in in. France, you know, French people, they, you know, <laughs> and a lot of money. So, so somebody believed in me. Yeah. And I tried to implement the same kind of thinking as yeah. a man to take risks. Yeah. The worst thing that can happen is that, yeah, you had to fix another job for this person. Mm. But nine times of ten, uh, it goes the other way, mm. I think. Mm. Okay, thank you. So, and your three. Yeah, but I would like to continue on the risk taking. It's it's uh, I, uh, of course in recruitment, but also you need when you scale up, you need to try new angles. Oh, you need to yeah. try new things yeah. and, and 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 keep on doing that because otherwise it will not fly. It it, it perhaps will. I mean, it will go in the right direction, but I really want to do uh, try out things that have not been done before. Mm -hmm. So I think uh, some some courage <laughs> to do that. Um, another thing uh, which, help, which I, helped me a lot was when we did this uh, aggress aggressive scale up at Sony, we need to recruit people very quickly. Mm. I was still sort of, okay, I want to do the test and so forth, so mm. we, but the thing is to have that network. It was a lot of people, uh, I think for many years I, I, I paid interest in sort of some colleagues in other 
mm -hmm. parts of the organization. I mean, just sort of meeting for lunch, sort mm -hmm. of what are, what are, what's happening. Mm -hmm. And it was actually just driven by interest. But then, I'll, then I realized that how, what power to to sit on that network. Yes. And also that people sort of knew what they would get in me as a manager or leader, mm -hmm. which also attracted some people to that organization. So, mm -hmm. so, so mm -hmm. really. To so be work able to on be, your network yeah, and, and, and do uh, it. And also sell your vision even outside of uh, the team. Absolutely. So people will uh, be interested in working yeah. for you. Yeah. Okay. That's interesting. Yes. And the third. Uh, oh, you did have a no, but that, I think we were. But um, <laughs> no, I think when it also comes to scale up, because it needs to be a bit flexible. Mm. So really, I, I, I can. The people you bring on board. Mm they need to be able to, to, to handle that kind of environment. Right. Because when you're growing fast, things change yeah. all the time. And, 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 and the people that like being in that context and situation. Yeah. And, and it's not right or wrong. It's just sort of that they, they know what they get energy from or if they get stressed about that or they just sort of, okay, let's do this. Mm -hmm. I can be flexible when it comes to so. Yes. And, and uh, I don't know if it fits here, but I heard in another webinar, uh, and I quote them, it's, it's, uh, it's uh, now in the COVID-19 mm -hmm. when everything is changing and, and uh, uh, some uh, companies or people tend to like give up and, and close down and, and, uh, or, or work less uh, or it's impossible to sell. And uh, this quote was that, it, uh, that it's now like in the uh, Tour de France, uh, that uh, it's not when it's flat and easy that uh, leadership is changing in the game. So uh, now in the, in the uphill and the hard work, it's the grit that exactly. actually makes uh, the difference to, to dare to uh, step out and, mm. and uh, put in a, an extra gear and uh, work. And I think you get so creative and you actually sort of spend more energy and time to think, okay, how can we solve this? How can we travel less? How mm. can I do my customer meetings? Mm. On, online and all of a sudden you have all these creative ideas that you could have come up with earlier yeah but but, but the situation sort of requires it and mm. and, and then you, it's it's like in the neighbor for more creative ideas so take the opportunity yes to use it for that I would say. that's true and mm -hmm. and we have talked a little bit of risk but also the courage mm. uh to lead in an, an, an unsafe and un unsure environment you need to have the courage to make that decision. That's an old quote also from Eva Kamp, yeah. that only people who are sleeping makes no mistakes. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I love that. Yeah. That's that the best I will quote. Use it is, is it in the, your book? Yeah, on the oh. front page. Oh, I love mm. that. Yeah. He, would, he would have liked me. <laughs> yeah. As long as you learn from it, Maya. <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> Travel with that, perhaps. <laughs> okay, so uh, I think uh, now we are um, open a little bit for questions. We have I've got some questions for you from here, from the chat, and uh, let me read them first. Yes, it is a question for both of you, and it's a question of uh, funding. Uh, funding is essential for growth. I mean, in the in the growth period, you have the um, the money flow. And you need to really have a check on that that you have the money to take the next step, and. Um, is it possible to to lead a scale up, scale up with limited funded would you say based on leadership only if yes how more startups out there mm -hmm. are, are, are in the situation now what would you say no, to me it would be uh, i mean even if i talked about this with a compelling vision mm -hmm. i think that would be even more important it's it's more or less do people want to be Part of, take part of this journey with the risk of it not yeah. flying or you will not have a salary in yeah. six months or something. Coming back to honesty, mm -hmm. right? Exactly. Th these are the prerequisites, mm -hmm. uh, the risks, mm -hmm. and how, uh, the, uh, like uh, these are the ups and this could be the downs, mm -hmm. uh, and, uh, and the vision and the people around you, and it comes with also with the leadership then. Yeah. It, I mean, that's 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 the part you choose to be part of them. So it's, yes. it would be you even more, even more important. Uh, yes, that you trust the people mm. that you're doing this with, right? Mm. 
What would you say? Yeah, I cannot really uh, answer that question because in my uh, scale-up story, I have had mm. the necessary funds to do what I was supposed to do. Uh, that was never an issue. But is that really true? Because mm -hmm. uh, you said that Eva Kalper was very conscious with costs. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. what do you mean with enough resources? Was it no uh, limitations? No, well, there were limitations, but I was supposed to open up new stores. Yeah. So I found a site and evaluate the cost, and then I asked for money to buy the site and to build uh, an IKEA store. Mm -hmm. And every time it was 60, 70, 80 million euros. And, yeah. and no problem. No problem, no. But you so, needed to make a good case out of it. I yeah, guess. and I needed to make a good case and a good profitability study also right. uh, for the coming coming years. Mm -hmm. so, but uh, I think that to be able to answer that question, I have to go back into the very beginning of IKEA, mm -hmm. uh, where there were no means, mm -hmm. and Ingvar was uh, biking around to sell fish and things mm -hmm. in Småland to get. Yeah. Uh, to get uh, some money, but uh, no, I cannot really. You hear that? Taste. You need to mm -hmm. bike around and sell mm -hmm. fish yeah. to, to get the money you need. I think that's a good. I mean, yeah. even if it's an image of uh, what uh, may be worst case, but I think that uh, is the case. If you're a true entrepreneur, you find a way to get your money to do what you really want. Absolutely, but also with the full respect that I mean, we talk about being brave and mm. sort of try out new things. One thing is to do that when you have the sort of a big company mm. and funding mm. but if you, if you have like okay can I do this brave but I don't have a salary then I think it's it's it's, it's putting even more pressure onto it and then of course of course um, yeah but as you said uh, Ingvar Kampfred started uh, with no means yeah Bill Gates did all the, all <laughs> yeah, the big entrepreneurs <laughs> did so it's, it's possible but you need to work super super hard I have another question for you. Do you have a strategy, uh, have you, as a strategy or goal to implement some kind of social impact into your organization? Maybe it's, uh, for, I, I know that the IKEA does that, right? Or, a social impact. Yeah, social impact. But wait, let me read the whole question. Sorry mm -hmm. about that. Uh, with social impact me meant here, diversity amongst the employees, working for a better environment in some way, working ag against one or several of the UN, 17 UN development goals. So should we start with IKEA? Because I think yeah. that's in the yeah, it, yeah, if we start with IKEA vision, it is to create a better everyday life for the many people. Mm -hmm. And that implies a lot of different uh, policies when it comes to environmental responsibility mm -hmm. and also social responsibility. Mm -hmm. And then you could say that it's also a way of branding to create good relations mm -hmm. to the brand IKEA. Mm -hmm. And that is in the vision and in the business idea yeah. to, to do that. Uh, it's actually built in into the yeah, and the values they are also creating some kind of social yeah. atmosphere uh, yeah. in the company and in the relation to the customers. Uh, IKEA should be a good citizen wherever IKEA is. That's cool. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Mm. And you have the chance now in concept logistics. Yeah, but we, I mean, <laughs> we're a much smaller company. We take some, you know, social responsibility with sort of smaller initiative and donate money when it's maybe more also like uh, sometimes more local mm. uh, but what we are quite heavily involved in is, uh, is sustainability for the env environment environmental perspective mm. because also how you for example um, how much air you you ship mm. <laughs> in mm. a box mm. uh, it does a lot. Yeah. exactly and how much you drive and, mm. and so forth so I mean there are parts of the logistical flow where you can actually do quite a lot on, mm. to the environment and, and what kind of um, wrapping yeah. you use yeah. and not use so much plastic and, and so and we are uh, right now this week actually opening uh, the, the electric road where you can mm. charge uh, your vehicle uh, directly from the road uh, without plugging in uh, is, is are you going anywhere <laughs> in that direction in the logistics uh, I mean the uh, uh, freight business it's, uh, are you going electric or not is it uh, in your future 
I mean, we work with a lot of with automation. Mm -hmm. We work with AI. I mean, we we try to sort of, uh, of course, look at all the technology races that mm -hmm. are ongoing. Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, it's a it's a value for the customer that yeah. we sort of want to solve or a problem. Yeah. And and then those are just sort of the techno technological means to to get there. Right. Right. Uh, I also have another question for you. Mm, what are the qualities that the leader should have in order to motivate the employee? I think we've talked a lot about this, but maybe we could uh, uh, dig deeper. I know uh, uh, I will get answer on Google, this person says, but according to hosts, how they respond in a, uh, according to hosts, how they respond in IKEA, if any problem persists between employee, how do they approach? So this is, we start with IKEA again. Yeah, I would say that managerial qualities, they don't change over time. What was good 20 years ago is good today and will be 20 years from now. And that is what I said before, to be honest and mm. fair and friendly and demanding mm. and to be a good example. Mm. It's very basic, but I think it, it competent, they have to be updated. Mm -hmm. But the managerial qualities, I don't think it changed now. But you don't mention which you do, communication, but that's in, yeah. implied in those mm, uh, skills, right? Mm, of course, to be a good communicator, that yeah. is it, yeah. Mm. So, so one of the things, being available to communicate to many of the people Absolutely. on the floor, mm. I think that's one transparent. thing that you're mm. transparent, exactly. Mm. And you, what would you say? No, but I believe strongly in uh, you, you. You mentioned natural, but be more authentic. That I, I, I um, when you have Maria as a manager, you get a lot of, of Maria. I mean, I don't put sort of okay. Now I put my no. manager jacket on because no. I think I've actually heard people talk. I they said I go to work, I put my manager jacket on, and then I, I, I am and behave. In, in a, a role, box. yeah, and exactly in a role which what they thought of, thought that that was the way they were going to mm. uh, behave. But um, I, I don't spend time on that. It's more being you, but then also being interested in in how you. I mean, what are the um, behaviors that are good for other people? I mean, mm. it's it's and, and as you said, like warm heart, mm. but still uh, challenging. It's not about just being sort of drinking coffee but no, it's, I think uh, showing you and yourself mm -hmm. also takes a lot of courage not only in sight of who you are but it takes a lot of courage to mm -hmm. show them this is really me this is something I really believe in mm -hmm. and and uh, and face people with that belief I think it's uh, it, it demands a lot about you bringing out yourself Absolutely. right but, yeah. how, mm -hmm. how did you how, I know that you have worked a lot with this uh, uh, tools to bring out yourself and come down to the true self, right? Can you I'm, say a great I'm a great fan of Brené Brown. No? Yeah. She talks about vulnerability and yes. empathy and also shame and guilt. Yeah. How much that affects me. Yeah. She says that either you learn how to deal with shame and guilt or shame and guilt will manage you. Mm. Yes. Mm. And how and and how how do you manage? And that is to be authentic, to yeah. be the one you are, yeah. and not be afraid of uh, admitting your failures. No, to be the one you are. But should you always, as a manager, be that authentic? Authentic that you also show your fear. I, I I'm really worried about this, and I don't know the answer. Or or will that uh, create uh, an? In, in, in uncertainty in the team. What do you think about that? No, I don't think it will create uncertainty. Uh, now I am in Latin countries, mm -hmm. and there the manager, he is supposed to know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because yes. he's the manager. Yes. And it is a strength to be able to say, sorry, I don't know. Right. Do you have an idea? That is a strength. And then you, and then you invite people, and you create exactly. like I, something I, mm, I create some kind of credibility in in the team mm -hmm. by showing that I can be vulnerable. Mm -hmm. And it, it That's is a, a, great a advice. new learning also. Yeah, for me. Mm. to be strong mm -hmm. is not to know everything. Exactly, it's to show your exactly. vulnerability. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm.
I think you mm. can show that, but then I also, some, some feelings I filter away. I, I don't want to get the entire organization to feel that I'm stressed or, mm. no. I mean, that's sort of, it, it, no, it doesn't add any, limits, yeah. there are some mm. limits on yeah. the, and, uh, but then talking about this, uh, trying out new stuff, being a role model, that's also, if you then say, okay, now I will try something new. Yeah. I don't know if it will work or not, no. but let's try it out. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And if you do that as a manager, and then then I think people will get more sort of eager and feel safe that okay, I can also try out new. Also, things. if it's a mistake. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. And I, I usually uh, yeah, but then share the stories of, of the mistake or what yeah. went wrong. So it's yeah. But to to learn from the mistakes, you also need to gather people and discuss what yeah. actually happened. What can we learn from this, and and how do we learn the most? What what is the best step now? So, do you have like a structure to gather? I mean, one thing is the structure to to uh, make the bold decisions, and then the structure to follow up those bold decisions. Mm. How do you work with that? As Maria said, I, I believe that feedback is a mm. prerequisite for mm. working in a management uh, group. Mm. So. I think that to have a common platform for how to give and how to receive feedback, mm. it is a prerequisite mm. for all this. Mm. Otherwise, you will uh, think that I'm criticizing you, but yes. I'm not. I'm and giving you, you feedback. It, feedback is always positive, yeah. although it sounds negative, but the purpose is to improve. That is why mm -hmm. feedback always is mm. positive. And you have to agree upon mm. that. Otherwise, mm. I don't dare to say to her that this was a catastrophe, what mm. you did. Mm. So that, that is a prerequisite for continuing. Yeah, and there are actually a, a science about that, that once the team gets to the feedback phase, mm -hmm. when, when we can give each other feedback mm -hmm. on a daily basis to improve together, that's when the team takes mm. takes off and, and really produces the positive. Yeah. Mm. Do, yeah. you, do you agree? Or yeah, yeah, and everybody mm. talks about it, mm. but still you see feedback culture, you see le to less of it. Yeah. So you really need to sort of train people in doing it yeah. so it doesn't get so dramatic and no. then it's also a way of, so it's in the beginning like also more organized than mm. some kind of method. I mean, it could be super simple. Yeah, but, but also a way mm. of, of sort of getting there and then also realizing that okay it, it wasn't that bad and mm. and it is and we can feel it okay mm. I gave you this feedback now it's not an issue anymore mm. and, and we can work so much better together mm. right right but uh, do you have any uh, like methods that you could uh, give out to the audience about this how to do this in the best way I always I always Google because I want to try out new methods. But one easy is uh, I, I use this three L's like what did we lack, like, and learn? Lack, like, like, and, and learn. learn. And it's Great. good to do, use in the beginning, I think, because it gets quite a lot of focus on the positive side. Right. So maybe okay. don't start with the method that no. is more of sort of too challenging. What was bad? Exactly. I yeah. mean, you want to be there. How you you want to go there. Mm. I mean, so you can improve, yeah. but to get it going, it might be a good way to Last start. Like, no, I mm -hmm. like that directly. That was it's super positive. simple, but it's, it's, yeah. it, it, still you get the structure and method and people get their mind going. Mm. Do you have any super tricks? Yeah, I have some exercise yet, but uh, I think it takes a little bit too more <laughs> time to uh, yeah. explain it. Uh, yeah. But uh, the conclusion is that uh, when it comes to different leadership topics, mm. I would like to share in my management team. This is number one. Mm. Mm. Okay, let me see if I have more questions. We have uh, still the 10 minutes or so. Um, what do you say? No? So you have still time to send me uh, some <laughs> questions. But um, uh, if, we, if we look at your whole uh, journey and, uh, and um, if you go back, if you would be able to go back, what would you have done differently, do you think? I think that I have been a little bit too comfortable. Mm -hmm. uh, I have never applied for a job. Ikea has always proposed. Do you want to go to Canada? Do you want to become managing a rec? Yes, okay. Mm. But isn't that I, due to your uh, results? 
they don't ask anybody to go to Canada. No, okay, mm -hmm. but uh, mm -hmm. if I would have done something differently, I think that I would have taken a little bit more risks to apply for being store manager mm. in China, for mm. example, or ah. India, Japan, something very different. Yeah. Because I had big IKEA behind me, and mm. they took care of me yeah. and the children yeah. and schools and everything. So mm. I could have used that situation to ex explore my mm. career and my life a little bit more. Mm. And when is the best time to do that? That is when you have created some kind of credibility in the organization, mm. so you're welcome to do it. Mm. So, so first create trust and then yeah first create trust and then then there to ask yeah. and, mm -hmm. okay mm -hmm. and what will you say no but I, it's almost mm -hmm. the same i was actually mm -hmm. sitting and waiting for someone to come and ask but no one did oh. <laughs> no but it, it's um that's very female actually. It, it, i have heard that that women <laughs> tend to think if i work really hard they will see me yeah exactly. nobody will they see know you. they've seen i've done uh, they, i do mm -hmm. good work but then someone actually told me maria mm -hmm. but what the you need to say what you want to do. Mm. And then I started to more say, okay, this is, uh, I would like to do this. This is for the competence or sort of experience I would like to yeah. acquire. And then things started happening. And, and when I now look back, each time I've taken on this sort of bigger task or role or responsibility, I've also sort of grown from that like really instant. Mm. Like it, it's, that's how it takes sort of the steps and, and learn things quicker. Mm. And to be able to formulate what you really want, mm. you can ha you have to go back to your insights. Yeah. What mm. is it that I really want? And who am I? And where do my strengths actually uh, uh, make the best um, or uh, fit the best? What could I uh, what could I uh, uh, give to this organization or to this vision? Or so that's for all of you to to look in into yourself and see where are you the best you right mm. absolutely it's not an easy exercise i think you should take help i, 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 I was I talking to help myself. from our colleague and it was she who challenged me to say okay yeah. but what do you really want mm -hmm. okay what do you want to do in three years yeah okay do you want to do this okay how do we sort of increase the chances that you will do? i mean mm -hmm. if there are competence or roles mm -hmm. and then you can also sort of take away stuff if it gets quite blurry yeah. in the beginning and then and the more you work with that the more crisp you are in mm -hmm. saying what you would like to do mm -hmm. and then it's a bigger chance that it will happen so um so we have talked a lot about uh, working with people but we in the end we talked a lot about working with yourself mm -hmm. uh, how do you encourage your team members to work with themselves what responsibility have you, do you have as a leader to make them look in, into themselves, would you say? I go back to the feedback uh, session mm -hmm. to create an open atmosphere where I am able to say what I think I should say mm -hmm. to you mm -hmm. and also to invite you to say the same to me. Mm -hmm. And what I did maybe every third month or every four months, it was to take out the management team from mm. the normal environment and mm. to go somewhere. And I had a little program about the different things I, I found important. It mm. could be feedback, it could mm. be about authenticity or mm. storytelling or motivation, all mm. kind of different coaching. Mm. Different. Mm. To do that regularly, it mm. could be values also. Yeah. But to do it regularly and try to make them do the same thing. Mm. Was, I had maybe 10 or 12 people reporting to me, but they had much more. Mm. So it was my way of... Uh, so leading by example. Mm. Which is, mm. and, and then mm. some, some topics. Yeah, but it, it is important to talk about it on a regular basis. Mm, yeah. Not only to have the values on no. the wall or so, no, okay, no. okay, but to talk about yeah. it and to show that you participate in that message, yeah? mm. Mm. down to earth. And mm. repeat, not, yeah. not mm. say we have talked mm. about that five years no. ago, but repeat mm. then, right? Mm. Yeah. yeah. What would you say? No, but also the frequency. I actually have a full day management uh, date next week. Oh and my it's God. It's so easy that you cancel it. Yes. Because it sort of takes quite extra effort mm. from you to yeah. plan that because it's 
outside your ordinary tasks. Yeah. And now I also realize that on my sort of monthly reports, and which I also then have with all my direct report, we, we always, or monthly meeting, we talked about what's the best practice of the month or best learning based mm -hmm. on, on the, our behaviors. Mm -hmm. And now I realize that the last couple of months, we removed that because it was, yeah. and then it's sort of, okay, it's so easy that yeah. that thing on the agenda gets removed. That actually makes you better. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So I will, uh, that's, so it was good to sort of get mm -hmm. that reminder, get that back. Mm -hmm. And because it's then it's repetition, yeah. we talk about it. Yeah. And that could be a small example. Like yeah. this person did this. Or and like you said, perhaps not fill it, but let it be open. Yeah. What do you want to talk about? Yeah. What is important mm -hmm. now? And, mm -hmm. and invite people mm -hmm. in that discussion. Um, I, I like yeah. that. We have a new question here. How do you di differentiate between a person being experienced for more than 20 years and the person who is newcomer? Who is willing to learn more? Uh, do you feel like teaching him will lose your dignity or rather you choose another person to guide him? So, so we, we should compare then somebody with 20 years experience and somebody completely new and how can you train them how can you actually teach them and who we learn the most? What's your experience in this field? The one who is new will have to uh, know the IKEA values, the IKEA culture, regardless of the competences this person has. So. Mm. And if, if he or she is reluctant to do that, then it's better to work somewhere else. Mm. Because the competences, they can always be learned, but mm. the values is more a question of attitudes. And the one who has been there 20 years, he has or she has proven that uh, he or she respects the value. Otherwise, he wouldn't stay 20 years. No, but I think this is if you employ a new person mm. with, uh -huh. with experience from another company in 20 years. Yeah, or other but company. it's more the same uh, mm. because that person comes from another company mm. and has to adapt or accept mm. or learn. Mm. Uh, what is the care values? Mm. So it doesn't really change. Yeah. And you haven't experienced any difference in in attitude or or ability, uh, no matter age or experience. Yeah, I have experienced people who think they like IKEA, think they believe in the values, but after some months, either they leave or I have to ask them to leave. Mm. Yeah, it has happened several times. Yeah, but mm. it doesn't uh, compare to age or experience. It's no, the personality. No, uh, not at all. And yeah. I do believe that you can fire somebody in a correct way based mm. on the values. But not also. only hire, also fire. Mm. That, that's important. Sometimes it's cruel not to fire. It is, mm. because they are maybe mm. unhappy exactly, in their exactly. role or, mm. or position. Yeah. Mm. And you, mm. if you look at what you're... Uh, experiences no but what i learned was that uh, i've had uh, direct reports like in all ages and with all experience that i that i i realized that i tend to maybe give uh, less feedback and, and attention to the people with a lot of experience ah they that you ex it was sort of okay but they will sort of cope on their own but that was a big failure for me and ah. I, you, you really need to, when we talk about feedback it needs to be given to everyone yes everybody needs to be seen and sort of also want to, to develop yeah um, and then if you have a new recruitment that are really sort of junior mm. of course you need to spend more time mm. um, with that person talking about other stuff mm. Mm. Um, so it's that's that would be no. Uh, I mean, it's it, you just also need to then adapt to the to the needs and, and, and for that person. But um, but my learning was that actually everybody needs to be seen. Everybody needs to sort of get feedback. Yeah, that was my big. Learning. And it doesn't matter the age or the experience if no. they can learn or eat not. It's a, it's about the if you believe their personality, right? How they want to. Yeah, and if you believe that everybody wants to do sort of get recognized. Mm -hmm. Uh, and also develop, mm -hmm. and 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 by the, you need to get so, the feedback to be able to develop. So if uh, IKEA employs on on a, a potential, you employ on on willingness to to develop. Yeah, I would say so. Yeah, that's also a great so. insight. And uh, and how how do you ensure that you don't have people only thinking like yourself? 
Do you have naysayers? Do you make it uh, a thing to have naysayers? It's the last question. Two minutes left. That, that is a little bit in the system also. Mm -hmm. If I am uh, strong enough, uh, then I need to have people with different opinions. Mm -hmm. I don't want everybody to have my opinion. Mm -hmm. I see that more as a weakness. Mm -hmm. Um, so I think this, that's a modern leadership yeah. that you need to. Mm. But but it's, it's easy to say and think and want. Mm. But how do you actually implement it in your in your system? And mm. I think the values, question everything, uh, ask why and why not. That is built in mm. the system then. And what do you say? No, but it, actually, in some because mm. I I've done a thing of it that mm. I really want to sort of secure that cool. uh, that we have different perspectives and different personalities. So in some recruitment processes, I've actually taken external help mm. to actually make sure. <laughs> it's not also, you choosing. Yeah, yeah. And, and also, I mean, there are there are tons of methods for mm. doing these personalities and some are more used. Mm. But just to have that second opinion or help mm. that, okay, how can this person compliment you? And mm. uh, so I, I tried to, because mm. it's so easy, you know, you, mm. I always, it was a nice person. Yes. Yeah, Exactly like yourself. I mean, mm. <laughs> so then you should be a bit okay. Yeah. Was it? <laughs> this be a warning. <laughs> warning sign. If everybody looks like you. Yeah. Okay. I think yeah, that wraps it up. I'm so grateful okay. that you are with us and with us uh, with our scale up leaders this year. So we hope uh, to follow that up uh, in the mentorship program and mm. see what happens with them. Mm. And uh, good luck with your own journeys you. now that we Thank are uh, on the way. Thank you. Thank you so much.